I'm going to say this again, you do not need to know how to write a single line of code in order to be able to build incredible Chrome extensions and actually sell them and make money from them. Uh, as you can see in here, uh, this is just um, an extension that I created a couple of weeks ago. It took me less than a day to create it and um, AI did all the heavy lifting for me. I'm not a coder, I don't know how to code, but uh, Claude provides everything for me as long as I give it the right prompt. And in this video, it, this is exactly what I'm going to give you. We're going to go over a prompt and I'm going to show you the things that should be in the prompt always and some of the things that are optional you, and you can either leave them or remove them from that prompt. Now, if you want the actual prompt, uh, just make sure you click the link below Come and join my uh, school community. It's incredible. It has so much stuff in the uh, in the classroom and you get every single template or blueprint I produce for um, uh, make automations, for custom GPTs, for any tools that we use AI to write code for us. And uh, the community is only about three and a half months old. We're growing rapidly and it's extremely engaged and active community. So make sure that you come and join us. Now, let's create, uh, let's go over this prompt. Okay, so, and let me put my glasses on. Okay, so here's what we're going to uh, say to uh, either Claude or ChatGPT or whatever AI you're using to write code. Um, we're going to say, please create a Chrome extension with the following specifications. Number one, uh, extension name. It's not necessarily important to be in here, but I like to give my extensions names and I like to do it in the beginning because then you're like, oh, I just thought of a name. Can you redo the whole code for me? You don't want that. And then oh, we're going to give it a purpose. You're going to describe the main purpose or functionality of this extension, kind of like bird's eye view. Like I want my extension to do this specific thing. Now the best Chrome extensions, they do one thing. And um, actually this is something that they look at when they, um, uh, when, when the uh, Chrome extension store um, uh, reviews your extension, because when you load it into the Chrome extension store, uh, either a bot or a human will have to review it and approve it before it's, uh, it's public. Okay, then number three is definitely optional, target users. Um, I've never used it so far, but I just put it in here just in case you're creating a, a specific Chrome extension that will be used by a very, very specific user. Again, optional. Number four, very important all the key features. Now you have to actually sit down and think through about what features do you want your extension to have. And you're going to put as many bullet points as needed in here. Uh, the next thing is the user interface. What do you want your um, custom, uh, sorry, not custom, your Chrome extension to look like? Uh, should it appear as a pop-up, a toolbar icon? Uh, does it need to have options page? Now, when I talk about options page, um, I will show you one of mine. So this is my school post saver. So this extension saves posts from any school community. And because I'm sending these posts directly into my database, I have this options um, window that opens up where I can put my webhook and I can also actually select which fields I want to send to the webhook. So this is what the options are uh, when the extension gives options to the user to do something additional. Um, also, um, any design preferences, uh, you would want to say, hey, I want it to look modern, I want to use this font or I want to use these colors or any of the things that actually appear on the screen for the user. Um, and then uh, you can, you, um, you will talk about the permissions. So it's kind of, I think that it's important because for example, um, you will need to tell your AI if you want the information 
that is um, collected from the web page where the extension is uh, interacting with, uh, where, the, where the extension is interacting with, uh, with the content of that web page. Do you want it to store permanently in uh, the Google, um, in the Chrome uh, storage? Do you want it to send it somewhere else or do you want it to have active tab? Active tab is like, for example, with this SEO extension, uh, the information is only live until I click out of the page. So if I click out of the page, all this SEO here will disappear. So things like this. And you don't have to know the exact terminology. You can just say, hey, I want um, the information to be stored in local storage or I want the information to be sent to this specific webhook and you'll give it the exact the exact webhook. Um, then um, we are going to uh, tell it how to integrate. So what exactly uh, do we want to do on that web page? How, do, how does it interact on the web page um, or any other browser features? Uh, for example, I have seen um, some extensions that are for YouTube and they pop out like on the actual page. Uh, with my uh, school extension, I will show you. So even though it's in the bar here, I cannot operate it from here. So this is how, so I will need a permission. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm just going to click on the first one here. I'm going, uh, I will need permission from school to be able to place my extension into their web page rather than being in the bar here. Uh, so these are the permissions that uh, you, you can um, tell your AI that you want. Um, then um, uh, we're going to um, add any additional requirements. Again, this is optional. If you've exhausted everything, uh, you will remove that. If not, you are going to, um, you know, give any specific requirements or preferences that you didn't know where to slot um, above. Uh, then, so number nine, these are definitely, definitely very, very optional, specifically if you're no coder like me. So number nine is about the code preferences and number 10 is about the actual files. So let's very quickly go through. The reason I've given you nine and 10 is because I want you to kind of understand uh, what is necessary and how these extensions work. So every extension is generally written with JavaScript. So this is the uh, language for Chrome extensions. Um, however, sometimes depending on the extension, you may need some sort of a framework like React or you need to um, use uh, different tools that will help with that Chrome extension, or you need to uh, mention any specific code, coding style or um, any rules that are necessary or guides to follow, um, any module systems, browser API usage. Um, um, if you are going to use API, I do use API with some of them. So I actually mention it, although I don't put it under code preference, I kind of put it in the additional requirements. Um, and as I said, this is definitely, definitely not necessary for you to put in your prompt, but I wanted you to look at it and understand uh, a little bit more of the code behind uh, the extensions. And then the file structure, again, you absolutely do not need to add this into your prompt. Uh, it's actually quite a bit, but uh, again, I wanted you to understand the file structure. So for example, every single extension has a manifest.json file. This is always required. Um, and then, Almost all of them have the background, which runs in the background and manages the extension behavior. Um, what else do we have? The content, uh, um, JavaScript, it interacts directly with web pages the user visits. We almost always have that. 
the pop-up HTML and pop-up JavaScript creates a pop-up interface when the extension icon is clicked. Almost always use it. Um, what else do we have? The options. This is where I showed you with, uh, with this extension where we're opening an options page. Not always used. You don't really need it. The CSS files almost always used. Um, often, uh, yeah, because if you want a, a nice style and visual elements on your extension, you need to have a proper CSS file and then any additional files. Um, then number 11, I personally always put this in here because when the AI writes the code and if you've mentioned that you want to have an icon, and I think it's always nice to have an icon on your um, on your um, extension, especially if you're selling them because it looks more professional. Uh, so when the AI writes it, it usually asks for three different sizes for the icon. So the ones that we have here, 48 by 48 and 128 by 128, but it also asks for 16 by 16. Now, in my case, I create my icons in Canva and the smallest size in Canva, uh, the smallest size file I can create in Canva is 48 by 48. So I'm actually unable to create a 16 by 16 file. So I always say I want to use an icon. However, the only sizes I can supply are 48 by 48 and 128 by 128. And that way the AI will keep that in mind when it writes the code. And number 12 is testing. Again, I've actually never used it, but you might have some specific, um, some specific Chrome extension that um, that needs some sort of a testing. So I've put it in here uh, as an optional um, uh, as an optional element. And, and then uh, for each file you include, please provide a, a basic structure of the file um, and comments explaining key functionalities. Uh, any and any necessary connections or references to other files. Please provide, provide all the files separately. Now, something I have noticed, and that happens with ChatGPT more than it happens with Claude, is unless you say, give me all the files separately, it kind of puts them in one big file. Everything is in one big file. So, and you, you need the files separately in order to be able to put them in the, uh, in the Chrome store. And so um, otherwise it's just not going to work. And uh, then I also say always also, also include comments in the code to explain key functionalities. Uh, now the basic structure of the file, sometimes it kind of works uh, in the opposite way of what we're trying to do. Because when I say basic structure in my head, I'm thinking just provide a file that is that has very clean code. Um, and maybe you need to change it a little bit because I have been caught with that. Uh, a basic structure of the file and the AI thinks, oh, you know how to code. So I'm going to give you just different snippets to include in your file. And it's like, oh, that's not what I meant. So maybe you can say, instead of basic structure of the file, you can say um, a clean code, uh, a clean code or something like that. Um, as I said, you, you need to work with uh, these, ty these types of prompts and make them your own. Like uh, I'm giving you a very general prompt with, as, as you saw, a lot of things that are, you can use that, you don't have to use this, this is just for your own um, information, but you can still include it. So basically you need to kind of massage it a little bit, uh, look at um, how your AI performs and then slowly create your own prompt template that you can use every single time. Because once you create your own prompt template, you will be able to use it time and again. And that prompt template will allow you to prototype and then build Chrome extensions very, very fast.